I grew up on the Maine coast. My father's a lobster. And so the better part of my childhood was not spent on dry land, but with him on the water. I would get up before sunrise most days and spend countless hours stuffing dead fish into bags and putting those bags in lobster traps and tossing those traps over the side of the boat. It may not have been the most glamorous way to spend my summers, but for people like me and my father, we were doing what we loved. Uh, he had been lobstering ever since he was young. Every summer, he'd put his boat in the water and set his traps and hope it was a good year, hope that he caught a lot of lobsters. And some years were good. Some were great. Some not so much. But he couldn't know that at the start of the summer. Whether it was going to be the best or worst year he ever had, he set his traps the same way. But what if he could know? What if there was some way to simulate or mimic the lobster fishery, to predict the lobster? How many newborns are they going to be next year? How much are the adults going to grow? Where are they going to move to? How many will die, get eaten? How many will be caught? Answers to these questions come from what's known as a forecasting model, a way of simulating the lobster population in its entirety. From studying lobsters, I know a lot about their biology, how much they grow, reproduce, their migration patterns, and this allows me to predict the changes in coming years. But there's an ever-growing problem that's making predicting the lobster harvest difficult. Climate change. Yes, climate change. The same phenomenon that's causing our Earth to get hotter is also making our oceans hotter, and lobsters like cold water. So this warming water is throwing a wrench in my model. Lobsters will behave and act differently in waters of a different temperature. This doesn't mean all hope is lost, it just means I need to expand the model. I need to quantify the relationships that lobsters have with temperature. How does it affect their movements, how much they grow and reproduce? Once I know this, I can simulate lobsters in the Gulf of Maine based on climate change projections that others have done. But why? I mean, why do this? Well, models like mine are used to make management decisions to keep the lobster population thriving. What's the smallest lobster you're allowed to catch? How many traps are you allowed to set? Are there certain areas where you shouldn't fish? Answers to these questions come from models like mine. But the model that management is currently using doesn't consider our change in climate, making its results inadequate. The Gulf of Maine is warming faster than 99% of the rest of the world's oceans. This fact needs to be considered inside the modeling framework because the wrong answers to those questions could spell doom for America's most lucrative fishery and the millions of lives it directly impacts. Through my research, I hope to develop an improved model so that management can make those sound decisions, so that my father and many others like him can continue doing what they love. Thank you.